It's Wednesday, December 29th, 2010, and this is a special edition of Streamline News, brought to you by SwimOutlet.com, the web's most popular swim shop. All week on Streamline News, we've been counting down the top 10 stories of 2010, and we'll start today with the number five story of the year, which revolved around the leave of absence and subsequent firing of Mark Schubert from his position as head coach and managing director of the USA Swimming National Team. Schubert said in a press conference in November that he only knew of one disagreement with Chuck Wilgus, who was, who was Schubert's superior, and that disagreement came at the Pan Pacific Championships. Despite the agreement, Schubert said Wilgus wanted Schubert on the job through at least 2016. One month after the Pan Pack, Schubert was, Schubert was put on a 60-day paid leave of absence, went into isolation, and emerged later with a press conference in Florida to announce his parting of ways with Wilgus and USA Swimming. Schubert's hiring in 2006, many believe, was a key part in the United States' great performances at the 2007 World Championships and 2008 Olympics. On to our number four story of the year, the Athlete Partnership Agreement. After more than a year's worth of discussion and compromise, the final approved agreement was released earlier this month by USA Swimming. What used to be a $21,000 stipend to national team members is now a $36,000 payment. One of the many issues that kept the agreement from approval was the clause on athletes' right image rights. In one of the first drafts, athletes who signed up for the agreement would give up their image rights to USA Swimming in exchange for an increased salary of $50,000. This would give USA Swimming control over athlete appearances, competitions, and use of image rights. Mark Schubert lobbied for a contract-free agreement to protect athletes' image rights. The USOC rejected the non-contract agreement and shortly after Schubert's firing approved an agreement that still contained the image rights clause, but it was only specific to USA Swimming related events and appearances. The agreement lowered the annual, sti annual stipend to $36,000, which was still an increase from $21,000, and required athletes who opt into it to compete in at least three Grand Prix meets and submit a seasonal plan to USA Swimming. Many of the top American athletes, such as Michael Phelps, Ryan Lochte, and Nally Coughlin, will likely not sign up for this agreement since their annual salaries far exceed $36,000. But the agreement would be a major step up for the majority of those eligible. Swimming World TV producer Garrett McCaffrey spent most of 2010 covering this story, and you can watch all nine split-time episodes he devoted to the Athlete Partnership Agreement by going to SwimmingWorld.tv and selecting Split Time in the Show tab. We'll conclude today's show with the number three story of the year, the sexual abuse scandals that plagued USA Swimming. Lawsuits were handed to USA Swimming left and right in 2010, many of them alleging that the organization did nothing to help young swimmers who claimed they were sexually molested by their coach. Chuck Wilgus, USA Swimming's executive director, infamously appeared on ABC's 2020 in April, saying that he didn't feel the need to apologize to swimmers who were sexually abused by coaches. USA Swimming, in the days after the ABC interview, began the process of creating a revised code of conduct that included a stricter guideline for coaches, parents, and other adults who come directly in contact with swimmers. Some of the changes included supervised talks between a coach and swimmer, a new policy on post-race hugs between coach and swimmer, and extensive background checks before a coach or adult is hired by a swim club. The new code of conduct was approved overwhelmingly in September by the USA Swimming House of Delegates, but many of the lawsuits within swimming, USA Swimming are still ongoing. That's going to do it for today's special Streamline edition. Tomorrow, we'll bring you the number two story of the year. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you then.